Hello, all you cool cats and kittens. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so this is marking our beginning of online classes in geometry. Hello, I am your educator, Mr. Arden. And so we're going to go through 10 1 today. Um, please make sure that if you have any questions, to write them down. And then when we have our Zoom meeting, um, you can ask me then. Or if you want to post any in Google Classroom or email me any questions, you are more than welcome to. <coughs> All right. So to begin, we're going to be looking at areas of parallelograms and triangles. Um, nothing really fancy here. Hopefully this will be a slight review. Um, the area of a rectangle is just going to be your base times your height. So the area of a, or a rectangle is base times height. Easy enough. Should be a little review. Um, a parallelogram, no different. Um, when you're looking at a parallelogram, very similar to a rectangle, but it kind of looks like it kind of like shifts a little bit. Um, but that's not going to affect the area at all. The area of a parallelogram is still base times height. Same business, okay? But notice, there is, um, the height is inside, okay? Now, it doesn't always have to be inside. Um, you can use any side of the parallelogram as a base. So if this is the base right here, I could say that this is the height or the altitude. I could also extend it and then drop an altitude right here, all right? The altitude has to be perpendicular to the base, okay? Um, so when we look at this, this is going to be the base, and then we can get our height this way, okay? Now, as I said before, any side of the parallelogram can be a base. So if we turn a parallelogram, and we look at it on this side, now this is going to be the base. And if that's going to be the base, well, I can drop it here, get the altitude that way, or extend this out, drop that, and get the altitude that way, okay? So... Depending on how you're looking at the parallelogram would dictate what the altitude is to what the base is, okay? And remember that the altitude has to be perpendicular to the base, okay? So we're looking for right triangles, right triangles, okay? <clears throat> um, the base of a parallelogram can be any one of its sides, so just make sure that if you use um, one of these as the base that you turn it accordingly. And the height is just the altitude. It's just the altitude from the base. And remember, it's always going to be perpendicular to the base. Okay? Always perpendicular. So you have to look for those little 90 degree triangles. Okay? Um, and then this is a little example about the altitude and the base. And this is what I was talking about before. So right here, there's the altitude to this base. But then if we turned it just a little bit, or we turned it 90 degrees, I should say, now this is the base, and that's the altitude, okay? Now, if you're looking at it like this, please be aware, this is not the base. And what I mean by this, from here, from that little corner, all the way to here is not the base. It's just the piece of the parallelogram. That's the base, okay? And we're going to go through, and I'm going to show you both these different ways of how to find... Um, or how to use the areas of a parallelogram, okay? So when we go down here, find the area of each parallelogram. Well, we know the area of a parallelogram is going to be base times height, so as long as we have those two pieces of criteria, we'll be all right. So when we look down here, there's our altitude for this. That's perpendicular to this base. So if I just go 5 times 4, that'll give me my total area. And it'll be 20 inches squared. 20 inches squared. Make sure that you have the units on it. We have to start getting used to the units. Okay? And whenever you're looking for area, it's always going to be squared. As opposed to like a length or the perimeter or anything like that. <coughs> Excuse me. For the next one. Okay? Now, this is what I was talking about. It looks really awkward, right? Like, oh, it can't just be base times height because what about this big gap right here? But that's what I was talking about earlier. This is still the base, okay? And then when we drop our altitude, notice that it is perpendicular to the base. So in order to get our area of this slanted um, 
two by four looking thing. Um, all we do is base times height, two times 3.5. Okay, multiply those two times 3.5, we get seven centimeters squared, okay? This is 3.5, okay? But the point of this is, you know, the base doesn't have to go all the way to where you're dropping the altitude, okay? The base is just whatever you declare in the parallelogram. So that's why it's 2 times 3.5, okay? And then we get 7 centimeters squared. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to write them down. All right, let's turn the page. All right. <clears throat> Looking at the um, coordinate graph. So we we are we still know that the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So we have to find our base and then we have to find the height. So I'm going to use this as my base. So my base my base is going I got to figure out the length of this. So I'm going to go the absolute value of -6 -0. Okay. And that's going to be the absolute value of negative 6, which is 6. So I know that my base right here is 6, okay? And I just did, and you could, if you wanted to, just negative 6 to 0, just find that distance. That's all you're looking for, okay? Now I have to find the height. And my height is going to be from here all the way down to here, like that. So I'm still going to have my, it's going to be perpendicular, so I just have to find the distance between here and here. So to get my height, to get my height, um, I'm going to go negative, I'm sorry, 4 minus a negative 4, the absolute value of 4 minus a negative 4 which is the absolute value of 8, which is just 8. So from 4 to negative 4, that's going to be 8 units. So now when I go to find it, it's just going to be my 6 times 8 equals 48 units squared, just like that. So just be able to count on a grid, be able to find your altitude, okay? <sighs> cool. So, if anybody has any questions, please make sure to write them down. Going on to the next one. The area of a parallelogram is 36 inches squared. The base is 9. Find the altitude. So, I'm just going to sketch parallelogram. Like that. doesn't have to be perfect. And I know that my base is 9. Um, and I have to find the altitude. So, I have to find that that X and I know that the area is 36 so I know that if I go 9 times X I get 36 inches squared so to solve for my X just divide both sides by 9 and you get X equals 4 inches squared like that okay so that one's pretty easy and you know be able to go vice versa if they give you the altitude be able to find the base not a big deal all right, now this next one right here, this is when it starts getting a little bit interesting, okay? So remember how at the beginning I said that you could turn a parallelogram and any side could be its base? Well, we're gonna utilize that concept here, okay? So when I'm looking at this, <clears throat> okay, let's see, I have to find DE. So I know DE, there's my X, that's what I have to find, okay? So if I have to find my x, um, let's see, that's perpendicular to this base, that's, that's information. Um, let's see, what else? I see the hypotenuse is 13, um, hmm, interesting. But they give us a little piece of information up here. So maybe if we turn this, if we turn this a little bit, okay, now we know this length. Okay, we know that, we know that if we look at this as the base, we know that length is going to be 13, and we know our height is going to be 9. So I can figure out the area of this parallelogram, okay? To figure out the area of this parallelogram, if I use that as the base, I know that it, my area has to be 13 times 9, like that, if I just turn it. 
And when I go 13 times 9, uh, it gives me something awesome, I'm sure. 117. 117 inches squared, okay? So that was, that was when this was the base, and that's my altitude. Now remember, this right here is the base, just the part that's part of the parallelogram, not the little piece that's going out getting to the height, okay? <clears throat> All right, so for the next one, we know that the area of this is, is 117 inches squared. So if we know the area of it and we know one base, we can figure out that altitude. Because base times the altitude is the area. So I know that if I go 9.4 times x, it's going to equal 117 inches squared. Like that. Has to be. Because it's the same parallelogram. We're just using a different base. And then to solve it, just divide by 9.4. Like that. So when I go 117 divided by 9.4, I get 12.4. So x equals 12.4 inches, or I should say de equals 12.4, like that. Cool? So no questions or anything? All right, if you want to pause the video and try this next one on your own, um, I would advise it. It might help you out, um, but I will solve it here shortly, okay? Cool? Cool? Oh, excuse me. All right, so hopefully you tried that one on your own. Um, so if we're looking at this, this is the same kind of deal that we have upstairs up here, over here. Except this time we're looking for CF. So we're looking for that variable right there, okay? Oh, excuse me. Um, now this is the same same idea because we're given an altitude and we're given this base, okay? So to figure out the area of this parallelogram, I can just go 10 times 12, and I get 120 inches squared, just like that, okay? So now if I know that the area of this parallelogram has to be 120, since I'm looking for that x, if I use this as the other base, so once again if I turn it, like that, and I use this as my base, then I know 13 times whatever this height is has to be 120, okay? So I'm gonna go 13 times x equals 120, and then just divide both sides by 13. So I get x equals 9.2 inches, just like that, okay? All right, so if you have any questions, um, Please make sure to write them down and then we can try to, I can try to answer them tonight if you post them on Google Classroom or we can, for our Zoom meeting tomorrow, we can go through it, okay? All right, go to the last page. Almost through this first day of note taking. All right, so we do have to look at the triangle. Um, hopefully this will be a slight review, but there is gonna be a little snafu in it. Um, so remember, the base of a triangle can be any of its sides. So if I'm looking at this triangle, this could be a base. Or if I spun it, now that's the base. Or if I spun it again, now that's the base. So it really depends on how you're looking at these triangles. But that doesn't affect the area, okay? No matter what you use as the base, you're always going to get the same area. And remember that the area for a triangle is, I'm sure everybody knows, one half base times height easy enough okay <clears throat> except now it's gonna be a little bit tricky because we have to figure out that height okay um, so to figure out the area of this triangle um, it's just gonna be one half base times height so this is gonna be one half remember the height has to be perpendicular to the base so this is gonna be 5 times 12 and when I go 5 times 12, 60, 60 divided by 2 is 30 centimeters squared. Okay? So that, hopefully that's a little bit of a review. Alright. Now down here it says, um, you know, remember isosceles equilateral regular 
um, you know, all the different kinds of triangles that we looked at, acute, obtuse, everything. Um, an isosceles triangle, remember, has two congruent legs. And if it's a right one, it's going to make life a little bit easier for us. Because we know that those are both going to be the same, just like that. Okay? So we know that if we apply the formula 1 half x, or 1 half base times height equals 128, um, and then we have to solve it. So it's going to be 1 half base. So for right now, well, I guess I'll put an x in there. 1 half base x times x equals 128, just like that. Okay? Now we have to multiply both sides by 2. So we get x and x equals 128 times 2 is 256. Do not make this mistake. x times x is not 2x. x times x is x squared equals 256. And then square root both sides. Okay, And you'll get 16. So x would equal 16 on that. So make sure to square, when you're multiplying x times x, x you get x squared, not 2x. Do not fall into that trap. Okay. All right. So looking down here. Um, so it says find the area of irregular shaded, the, of irregular shaded figures. So here, this is the, you gotta figure out the area of everything. Um, if you know that this is six, um, if you just go 6 times 6, you know that this is going to be 36 inches squared for the square. And then for the triangle, it's going to be 1 half base times height. This is 6. That's 8. So this is going to be 1 half 6 times 8. And 6 times 8 is 48 divided by 2 is 24 and that's for the triangle okay and then add them up 36 plus 24 so I get 60 so that's going to be 60 inches squared like that okay so that was for a total so that time we did have we did add um, for the next one you're going to have to figure out the area of this whole triangle first and then subtract that smaller triangle from it. So for the first one, I'm going to go 5 plus 4 is 9. So 1 half, whoops, 1 half, 8 times 9. And I know what it is, but I just want to double check. 36. So that was for the whole one. Now for the smaller one, it's this, I can use this as my base. And then that's going to be my height. So for this smaller one, I'm going to go, oh, I guess I could have just done that to begin with, huh? <laughs> 8 times 4 divided by 2. 16. Whoops. 8 times 4. That's 16. That's all you have to do. I guess I gave... Don't worry about this. You don't have to do that. That was my, my mistake. Did too much work. But if you use this as the base, you know that's going to be the height. So 1 half base times height. So you know that the area of that's going to be 16. Because 8 times 4 is 32. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Cool. Alright, for the last one here. Um, for the last one... So very similar to, the, similar to the one we did before, um, except now you can add up this triangle and this triangle. So for the first one, um, if you turn it, base is 11, height is 14. So if I go 1 half, 1 half, um, 11 times 14. And when I do that, I get 77. And now for the next one, I'm going to go 1 half, 6 times 14. And when I do that, I get 42. Add those up. 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 119 units 
squared, just like that. Okay. All right. So if you have any homework or if you have any questions, make sure that you write them down. Um, as far the, as far as the homework, um, that's going to be. So it's going to be 10.1, 1 through 16, and 23 through 27. 1 through 16, and 23 through 27. Okay? So you're going to have to go through, find a couple areas, parallelograms, area of triangles, things like that. Um, so if you want to get started on this, I can answer questions tomorrow when you come on Zoom. Um, and I can do a little bit of review, and that is all for right now, all right? So get to work on this, um, you, hopefully you can finish this in about a half hour or so, uh, and then we'll go from there. Cool. Thanks for your time.